Hey what's up guys, it's time to talk straps finally. I've been putting this video off for quite a while. I've mentioned it several times in some other videos I've done. And um, uh, yeah, it's just uh, finally I'm going to get around to it because I finally set up some bit of a workspace to try to do these videos. So we'll take it at that. Um, and so here we go. So the, this is going to be mostly focused on, um, on straps that i've had experience with and i bought with my own money so nothing none of this stuff is paid for or you know sponsored or any of that stuff uh, just like the watches i purchased them all myself so it's completely uh free of any <laughs> any uh any influences at all it's just my own preferences so and what i, I want to add to the beginning is that uh, these are just my experiences and um by no means are these the only ones that uh well, there's so many straps of course and and uh, I'm not saying these are the best necessarily, but these are the ones that I just uh, I gravitated towards. And the ones that I don't wear as much, uh, I'll, I'll kind of mention that as well. Just bas your basic standard NATO straps, uh, I don't usually wear them quite as much unless they're a specific um, color or pattern or something that you can't get in a, a different, uh, you know, um, different brand or something. So we're going to just focus mostly on um, on uh, NATO styles and like uh, like I guess elastic straps like the Marine National style and uh, and I'll tell you like what I think about them and what the differences are and uh, maybe which one I like and you know which one might be suited better for you or something like that. Um, these will not necessarily be the best pairing for this particular watch, but because this has drill lug holes. Um, it makes going to make the strap changes and showing this off a lot easier. And so what we have, we're going to start off with, uh, of course, your basic NATO strap. Um, it comes in different uh, qualities, but it's basically like this double layer, like you see here. And um, you've got all kinds of colors and patterns, of course. And uh, this is pretty basic. They might have slightly different hardware, like this, the look of it. Um, you know, but this is essentially your basic NATO strap or NATO style strap. Sorry, I might not be able to say that necessarily because it's trademark. But anyways, it's your NATO style strap. But we all know what we're talking about here. Um, uh, yeah, so you just run. Let's just get the spring bars into this thing first so we can demonstrate your basics. Uh, I want to make this quick because I think most of you guys are into watches and if they're into NATO straps, well, um, I've done this already. So there's that. And, and I'm using the Seiko Fat Boy fat uh, spring bars that they usually come with with their divers. Like that. And make sure it's good. So um, as you see here, you just do a pass through here, right, and one to the top, and then through the bottom, and um, come on, yeah, like that. And these are all the hardware is usually fixed, so you got to find the right midpoint, and it may shift one side or the other. And I try to get the at least these part, these these uh, keepers on the same distance from the from the uh, from the case, and this, right now I'm on the another Seiko here. That's the SB, SBEC 005, 50th anniversary automatic chronograph, con wheel, uh, limited 500 pieces. Really like this one. I'm just actually I'm just. Got off the the stock uh, bracelet, which I like it, but um, I just felt like trying something else, and I had this from my Christopher Ward the C60 that I recently got. It's just a hybrid strap, and because it has the orange accents, and of course black and all that, I think kind of works, sporty, and so we'll give that a try tonight, or rather, it's for tomorrow. Let's set that aside, and uh, so that's basically it. And there's a couple of ways, and there's videos on how to secure a NATO strap, but basically you do this kind of deal, uh, right? Run it through, buckle it into size, and then 
this is the part that I think people um, might do differently. I mean, depending on the length, right? And they, they sometimes make them too long. Where actually, if it's too long, it's usually a good thing because then you can do one of these numbers and just. I think this is the usual classic way to. So let me back this my video up so you can see more. And then my wrist is not totally up in your face like that, right? Just a single fold over, and hopefully it's long enough just to perfectly keep right there. And that's basically it. And you got a little bit of like this fold over on this side, right? That's typically how you wear it. And I try to again. I could probably, if I see this, I'd probably take it off and just shift it down closer to this side so that it's more equidistant between this and this hardware as well as this side. So I can see this side is a little bit closer. But anyways, we're not going to get that detailed right now. And so these are okay, but the problem that, you know, well, it's not really a problem, but the, some people have grapes about the double layering, right? Because you have the single pass and then the layer underneath it. Um, and then that creates a little bit of... of a noticeable amount of lift depending on how thick these can get right and I, I agree I don't like it too much myself but depending on the watch it can work and you just kind of recognize that that's the way it's supposed to fit and work right as your spring bar fails don't forget the purpose of these it's just that it, uh, one of the advantages that either one of the spring bars uh, breaks this is a closed loop essentially unless this comes off, but assuming that doesn't break your, your buckle here, it's basically a closed loop. So if one breaks, then the uh, spring bar on the other side that's still secure will still at least hold it to your strap, right? And it's not going to fall to the ground or you lose it in the ocean or whatever uh, on either side. But of course, both fail. Some will break off, then they're screwed. Oh, before I get into it more, my preference is um, this works okay if it's just the right length, but I find that looking at so much fold over and with that little bit of that tongue sticking out at the at the end that you might have saw earlier, I my style of doing this generally is I prefer to just tuck it back into the inside like that and just roll it in. Come on. And depending on the NATO and the style of hardware, sometimes you can't even do that. You only have to push it through once and hopefully it's not too long but yeah I push it in as far as I can get without it disappearing completely because you need to have something here otherwise it always flop over on the other side right but um this is basically how I do it it's not as convenient to undo it because you have to kind of pull it you know kind of run it out this way instead of being able to push it from the outside and and then taking it off but I think it looks to me it looks cleaner and you just don't have you know it's just, you don't have that extra piece here and you don't notice that fold over as much so it looks neater that's how I do it and so um, yeah but um, I don't uh, depending on the style of watch I generally go for a single layer pass through uh, just a single pass through well, they're all single pass-throughs, but um, uh, basically a single layer. I don't like, I never under, completely understood why they needed this thing on the bottom other than to either have a hardware here to match this side, or I think what I've heard is, or read somewhere a long time ago, is that if you take your watch off or you're taking it, and if you didn't have this piece that came, comes through here to hold it, um, and this might have been when, like, the lug spacing was more liberal and, and looser. Maybe they didn't have the perfect fitting needle. This this watch I could just slide right, you know, imagine if it was, if it didn't have that. You, know, you lift it up real fast or whatever, and, or it's just really loose in here. It's not as tight between this, you know, the spring bar and the case, or it's bigger gaps. Or This could just slide Right, right off and down like that and onto the ground. So I think the idea, I believe, from what I think I read, is that this stops it, right? You can't go anywhere. It'll just, it won't drop off. So I think that's maybe why you have it. But these days, pretty careful and 
just by friction, the way it's weaving, woven in, provided it's not too loose in there, you don't have super long lugs or something, I don't think it's going to be an issue. So, um, and the other thing too is, um, well, well, for, let me get into this. What I do is I've uh, addressed this by the, most of my straps that I that did have this kind of general design, such as this one. I just cut it off. I just cut that off and just try to heat seal it with a flame or something, maybe crazy glue, and that would do it. And then you have a single pass through. And when you do that, obviously you have one less layer and it doesn't seem like this is all that thick and it makes a difference, but every little bit kind of counts. And so you do that. And then just to show you, we're running out of time on this thing. I'm trying to go quick as I can, try to cover it, all the straps that I like and what makes them different. So you do the same thing basically with the, with this. So I'm not going to completely, um, well, maybe I will. This is pretty long here. And so, I don't know, sometimes I'll just feed it back through as far as it will go. That, anyways. And also with, okay, so it's thinner. You can see it's not raised off the wrist as much. So that's what's one thing. And I think this is a bit overkill, it's a bit redundant. Um, you still have a closed loop system. So if it breaks, or the spring bar fails on either side, and of course both won't make a difference, so it'll still fall off. But either side, uh, it'll still hold because it's still a closed loop system, basically. Again, provided the buckle doesn't somehow <laughs> break off as well, because um, if that's gone, then yeah, it's no longer closed. Um, uh, the other thing too is that you notice that the restrictions on most of these standard NATOs is that these are fixed, all right? And then also this distance between here is fixed. So your watch has to sit a certain place and depending on your wrist size and all that, this buckle can either be um, all the way over here or maybe it's two more over here depending on your wrist size and I guess specifically how the matter constructed the NATO strap. So with you losing this, this piece here uh, in the middle of this extra layer, right? Not only thinner, but you can you can actually have the ability to slide the uh, move the uh, the watch head up or down, you know, around the strap depending on where, and you won't have anything to keep you from going further out this way or maybe even closer if that's the other way. But I kind of doubt you're going to move that way, and so uh, that way you can adjust it so that you can center the hardware uh, exactly where you like. I would think probably here, if not maybe slightly more over. Uh, so you have that option too when you lose go single pass without that extra layer um, I will say um, Going back to the classics one. This is a one from Nate uh, Phenomenado. I actually won this from Patrick from a uh, take time with Patrick uh, um, Marlo <laughs> I think that was his name. Sorry I forgot your name, but uh, he's on Worn and Wow now. And uh, so congrats for kind of moving up. Kind of disappeared, and I guess he just works his way into that, and that's great. Um, but anyways, Juan is on his, uh, when he's still at his channel, he doesn't really, I don't think he really does much on that anymore. Uh, so anyway, it's, it's a really good, high-quality seatbelt style NATO strap. And um, what's good about this one, if you're going to go with a, a standard kind of, configuration and design right for a NATO is you want floating or movable keepers. Uh, usually it's going to be one or the other, not both keepers, and I'll explain in a second. So what's good about this is um, this has plenty of length, it's comfortable, it's really well built, this, this brand. Uh, and um, yeah, so what you have here is this keeper on the inside, you see how it's movable? So what that allows you to do is um, when you fold over, and I would do that, if it's looking like it's too, not enough, like too close to the end, then you can just shift it down, then you get that perfect length, no matter what size your wrist is, it'll adjust accordingly to get a good secure on it. However, I think 
for me, I like the way Haviston does it, and I'll show you this in a little bit later. I want to get to those, but they actually they keep this fixed, but they have the outer one movable, and I believe that's a better system, just because um, with you, you have a little even more flexibility because with this this keeper is still stuck out here. And you may perhaps not want it to, depending on your wrist and how this everything fits and sits on your wrist, this might be too much out here. So imagine if you can actually move this keeper in instead, and so that fold over moves down. And so it also depends on the ultimate cut, you know, it's how length of this, how long you have to work with. But you can always, like, you find that it's too much anyways, and you want it to sit neater, you don't like it hanging or see, kind of seeing this bunch out on this part you can kind of make it smaller and still get that kind of wrap over but you just what you would do i would probably do is just find a way to carefully cut it down to size make it shorter hopefully match the roundness i think using a quarter or something that's about the approximate diameter to use as your template to kind of mark and cut uh, the same kind of curvature and then you can shorten it and then that way uh, we can move it down and get less of this fold over part right um and then with the outer one you can just move it in and then okay maybe stay nice and compact just below the wrist size and you may not see it nearly as much as this uh does that make sense so um if you're gonna go with a standard hopefully you can find one with at least one movable keeper that helps uh just give you a better custom fit and uh, perhaps make it a little bit tidier as well at the same time so going on from nato's style um we're going to let's transition to something similar so we're done with these oh and if uh, i still like some certain standard nato straps although i do plan to get these in single pass if i can if i can't i will cut them as well but um Instead of a plain one, I'm not actually into too many bond style, uh, only certain ones. Um, I'd rather have like a single stripe like that or or something like this. I, something about how even it is uh, doesn't always appeal to me. <laughs> That's just me. Or if you can imagine it was all gray and you just have like a, a single black stripe in the middle about this thick as well. That works too. But um, a lot of times the other colors or patterns that are based around this, you know, very equal thickness of uh, striping. Uh, looks a little too even to me. I, I don't know. It's kind of weird. I kind of like something either it's plain all around or it has something a little more interesting going on than just very even banding. Uh, but this one um, is kind of different. This, this is from Cheapest Nears, but uh, a bunch of other brands now make these too. They're just basically rib natos and they got basically like these ribs running down it and I like these because um and you can get these in colors and patterns as well it looks like but uh as far as plain one it's a you know a uh, black one's classic and this is seatbelt it kind of works for certain watches especially if you have a simple black and silver watch uh but to add some visual interest I think it's nice to have this texture on it it just breaks up the surface and just gives it that little extra something to to make it more interesting to to wear um i don't think i really need to show it on this but just you know, get the idea check out my instagram or something you probably see i've posted plenty of other watches that use this and other color versions of this strap so before we do the elastics we're going to go stick with the um haviston so here's my example of the movable second keeper I think yes so this phenomenato this one right by the near the buckle moves but this one this is uh from haviston this is the parade strap uh it's like a seatbelt it's, it's good quality um got lots of nice colors and th see this one moves and i'll show you why that's uh, better for me um and it might be better for you as well so we'll just quickly run this through so I find that for most instances I tend to move it down this way a little bit more when I once it wraps around it just seems like it's better 
centered. Well, actually, you know, it might not matter for this one because this one moves, but uh, I would adjust accordingly. So you put this on just like a regular NATO strap. And again, yeah, it's double layer, but this is not too bad. And I think the material is slightly thinner. I don't know. Uh, but to put this through here, what I was saying about having this keep removable is that when you, if you do a fold over such as this, but generally I still like to put tuck it on the inside. Uh, I just think it looks neater, but for convenience, I'll do this, you know, then you can just get to where you want and then you just pull this one back and this locks this, the, that, and so it's different ways to do it, but I think because, you know, for instance, this length is too short. If, it, if you had that one where it was fixed out here, you wouldn't be able to do that. You understand? You'd have to, you know, that one was stuck out here and you had to, you got no enough to, to wrap around to this one that's fixed or that's, even if it's movable, it's going to look kind of weird that you have to fold it over here and have the, imagine this, uh, this hardware locking it down on this side, like a small fold all the way on the kind of the outside of, of this uh, part of the strap, right? It's not going to look right. Um, so, yeah, again, it depends on how the length of this is left, but when it's shorter, and I think it in this case it's better, that way you don't, again, have that much going out there. I just move it in as close as you can, and then pull it through. Probably not to cover the buckle, which is right about there. You find the right spot, and then you just move this. Or trying to do this right? Okay, yeah. Move it back to secure it. Probably have to just pull this in back so it doesn't fall out from this keeper. And there we go. And then just pull it to secure, and that should be good enough. It should hold all day. Not really a problem I found. It doesn't move much at all. And there you go. And see how, you know, at least this is tidier and more compact on the bottom of your wrist. And you notice you don't see it. You, see that? you don't see that that fold over kind of peeking out and, and out on this side, throwing off the balance when you look at it overall, especially from the top, because you're going to see this piece, you know, fold over on this side. So this is nice that it keeps it nice and tidy in the back here, underneath where you mostly, most angles, you won't see it unless it's on the bottom, but that's okay, right? So that's why I would prefer the second keeper. And again, you can, cut, like I said, for that, um, you know, um, if this was super long, you could still at least cut it down to, to size and get it compact here. You don't have to, like, you know, ex use the full extent, it's, which will probably cause it to come out here before you can fold over and, you know, not pass the buckle area, right? There's only so much you can do if you catch my meaning. So that's, uh, I like Haverson straps a lot. And again, I'm not paid. I just I like their inspiration from military uh, sources and, um, the quality is good, the prices are fair, and they have great colors and patterns. Um, what got me into it was their service series, which is a lot of military themes. This one is the invasion because it matches the some of the paint schemes on the during D-Day in World War II. The planes were painted with these black and white stripes on the fuselage and the wings, I think. Definitely on, on the center part of the body. I'm pretty sure the wings too, but Anyway, that's where it got this color scheme from, and of course the uh, army drab or olive drab, whatever you call this a color, that was the majority of the plane was painted. And this is their latest version. It's the enhanced. Um, they've gone through several iterations, and even they had a double pass version too before uh, they switched to a single pass. And I've owned basically all variations throughout its, its life, and uh, previously something like this so the main difference is that uh, depending on the model they may have updated the hardware to be at least the keepers like to be this leatherette kind of material which is fine it's actually still water resistant I've, trust me i've washed this many times it's fine i, I think if you're going to get a nato strap anyways it's going to be kind of pointless if oh you can't get it wet you gotta baby it no 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 unless it's leather that's something else and then 
what's the point of that right no there is a point it looks cool too but uh we're talking something that's more rugged and practical and um you can actually use in more circumstances i think without it worrying about going funky or bad so uh they both have sliding second keepers which is good this is uh i appreciate they always kept this design even from the beginning when they were a double pass um good hardware uh, you can get them in a variety of finishes i usually get them just in brushed but they have high polished um i don't forget if they have b blasted or even like maybe you can go black dlc potentially i forget um we talk about customization and talk about uh, erica's more um but for now this is invasion i forgot what this one's called sorry uh but it's got like this nice blue and grayish and grayish blue kind of color um yeah and uh also they added these uh reinforced areas for the holes on the enhanced version they didn't have that before but i never really had a problem with these going bad you know this they, they make a pretty good uh pretty good weave and, and everything and um yeah so uh what's the difference that's the main difference between the two other than that they basically will will wear and um fit the same oh and then lastly sorry they added this other kind of uh reinforcement piece at the very tail end they didn't have that before as you can see here so um yeah so it's you know take it or leave it um this is the way they've gone with the, the newest version i think maybe at least at the time when i got it a few months ago several months now but uh they still offered if you can give you the option to either get the enhanced or you can go with i think that um depends on the model i don't think there's available for all, every single you know uh versions of that of these uh, service series straps but uh, anyways um with these it's a little bit harder to feed through especially if it's tighter inside here um this does add a bit of thickness to that as well as the uh, reinforcement on this part of it so if you do that you just kind of have to like, lay it down and put on the uh the spring bars after the after you know kind of lay it down and then put the spring bars in after that and then you got you got it run through otherwise just trying to run this through here uh, it's, it's not going to work with this one. Well, it's pretty tight and I don't want to force it. But once you, you know, clear all that, it's right, It's kind of like a regular thickness here. And so, um, you know, that's why you would put the spring bars on afterwards. And you'll be fine. You have a little bit of play to move it up and down a bit. But for ease here, we're going to go with the, the previous version. It didn't have all that, so it just runs right through pretty easily. I can feel where I usually do the fold over because that dictates where the buckle I want sitting on the bottom of my wrist kind of dictates where this ends up. And so, um, single layer, it's a little bit on the thicker side, but this the material is for quality, but still, at least it's a single layer, which already helps. Um, because the double layer before, uh, yeah, it's a bit much so shut that in i'd probably move it a little bit closer so that this buckle is like further down so let's just do that real quickly only thing is you can only go so far and then you want to wait being butt up against this part because it has this piece here that's the material that's just uh nicely stitched on and secured but you can't really go beyond that so that's about as far and also if you're too close you may not get a good fold over or bend down from here it might be so taunt because of this thing up butt up against the spring bar that it may have trouble kind of rolling over it and you might have some i don't know a uh, little bit of fitment issue you'll probably make it work but it won't feel or maybe look quite as right you can imagine it might want to bow more because it's going to feel more thicker and reinforced get the closer you get to that part but anyway, so yeah, so that's what I do to just move this buckle down more. I don't want it too much up the side of my wrist. And uh, with these, they have a good length on these usually. Uh, and I think, I don't know how they do figure it out, but it's just the right length for, I think, most sizes. So 
Uh, and then these you don't really fold over. I, th I think it's, eh, you probably could, but it's just tight enough where I usually, and this length is fine for me. I don't mind this too much. This doesn't actually bug me. And if you don't want this to stick up this much, uh, what I sometimes do is I'll do like a, kind of a pre kind of conditioning a roll on it. So it wants to curve back closer to the strap. So when you fit it through, you know, it just kind of pushes up or hugs the, the strap more and doesn't want to like uh, come out this way. You know, it's going to kind of naturally curve into it after, since I, I kind of rolled it or you know, curved it a bit. And so, yeah, you can just, again, fit, move this down, fit it to size, and there you go. Holds down the end. It's never been a problem. It's actually pretty secure. And there you go. These are some of my favorite straps. Just a variety of color and the tones that they use are quite cool. Um, and that's yeah, a good strap. They run around um, 20, they've gone up a little bit, but I think around $28. Um, I think if you buy a set, there's a slight discount, or if you buy more than one, or I forget, I'm sure there's a slight discount uh, if you buy more. Um, I don't remember what the phenomenon is because I never bought it, but I think they're, they are kind of around that price range as well, uh, if I recall. And Chiba Nader is a pretty good place to get certain straps, and something like this, uh, I like. It's, um, especially if you go five or more you get even 20 percent off your whole order so it's even cheaper but i think to start i think most of these are around 10 bucks or something they're not that expensive um and they often have sales and stuff and um yeah i'm not i wouldn't go too much with the leather products I, eh, they don't seem that that all that great the pain it's, it's kind of hit or miss with them sometimes uh, maybe many times, but uh, but I've bought enough where I kind of feel like okay, this would be a good and safe fit to go with, and so yeah. Um, and standard NATO straps, these they can run really cheap or very ex expensive. You go a very premium build, obviously. Um, so that's Haviston, and um, yeah, I think this is one of the best ones you can get. I really like the straps. They got a whole bunch. They got uh, like a, ones that are all like a canvas material. So it's looking like more or condor maybe, but it is. So it looks pretty rugged, like almost like I guess condor, right? Uh, what you make your backpacks out of. Okay, so we're gonna go into elastic straps. Um, one of my favorites is um, actually uh, well, watch steward. But let me um, let me go into. Erica's real quickly. Um, both of these will require you to remove uh, the spring bars. You can't, they're already basically, the way you, this is a closed loop system, so there's no way you can feed it through. Although there are some options where you can ask, because these are all made to order, so they're all customized. So the overall color, the center stripe, the stitching, accent stitching here, they have to be the same, I believe. But, you can change that to red, blue. They got all sorts of options, and there's different stripe colors, uh, all that. The hardware also can be customized. Um, stainless steel. I always, again, I usually go brush, go high polish. I'm pretty sure they have a B blasted, and they have a black DOC. And I believe the, I know they have bronze because I have one on my uh, bronze watch. And so, and then sometimes you can have a, the if you want like that kind of military kind of number coding or something that's or kind of printed or as it's stitched into the uh, the material you can get that too um you can get these in the classic marine national style with the green and the yellow stripes which i think they kind of started off with um yeah and they're very good quality they're stretchy good uh quality i don't know i've never had any problems with them yeah they could potentially stretch out but just tighten it up done right uh they're very washable and they dry fast too when you wash them. That's probably one of the things I like going. They're one of the fastest drying uh, straps out there that I've had. A lot of these other ones, they tend. Oh, this one's not too bad because of the material that they use on that one. But a lot of these, the other kind of like premium Sipo style, uh, even the Haviston because of the kind of a thick weave. 
um, they can kind of hold the water a little bit. And so I'll just kind of pull it through a towel and really try to get as much moisture out so they can dry quicker. But the Ericus ones, I definitely noticed that they don't take long to dry up. And um, so that's good. Um, so we'll put this on here. I, I haven't done this, but it actually looks pretty tight on this. I kind of imagined it would before I did it. So the thing about having drilled lug holes, you can just pop spring bars out. I won't launch them across the room because I do not need to go play hide and seek with these things. It's a game I'll probably lose at. Okay, so some people get intimidated or just they don't get it on how to feed these through. And I guess you can take this apart to make it easier. Like you see this break in, in here. I think you can push it through and then run the thing out. So it's, you might have a little more clearance to do it, but I don't even bother. So you have to just think, when this goes on, the rest, this always pulls around up this way. And then it'll hook onto this, this piece here, and then it'll sit something like that on wrist, right? So that's how you want to orientate it. So keep that in mind, when you put it on the watch, this will always be kind of towards the 12 like that. And so you're going to do something like this. Right? This part where it runs through this side. And then this one, there's this thing over here. And so you, that's the only thing about these though. They're not as convenient to do strap changes like the NATOs, like this, the single pass, or your standard NATOs. Because those you can just, unless they're super thick in some areas, they should be able to just, you know, pull them through. Get them clear and put on another one and so these you have to go through this process it's not hard you just push one spring bar in it's this end of course and then trying to secure that carefully put in try not to scratch anything but just know that these things happen you, you probably you scratch i try to again make the this hardware match up with this one in terms of the length Coming down, so looking down, you know, this one is smaller, it's not as wide as this one. Uh, so somewhere in the middle, so this is kind of about right. And it should look like this when you've got it on correctly. And test it out before you make sure your spring bars are in. Uh, and then again, closed loop system. When the spring bar fails, you still holds on. Um, and... Some people find this tricky. It's not that hard. Yeah, the, it's it's kind of a tight fit in some ways, but all you gotta do is get close and you just use one finger to lift one side and the rest slips right in. It's not a big deal and you just do a quick adjust, things like that. These material is not that thick too. The material that they use for the, the parachute, basically it's a parachute strap of some sort. Uh, that they That's where the Marine National originally got the idea and the material from to make their their uh, straps um so it's nice and thin so it's single layer too and uh yeah i like these and you can make them tighter and if your wrist swells up at least it's stretchy so uh it's not going to be too bad and uh yeah i like this i like these i have quite a number of these they're not they're one of the more pricier ones they're not the most expensive but they start off around 70 or 80 bucks or so uh yeah for your basic you know you're not going anything fancy but i think if you go like doc hardware maybe in bronze that that will cost a bit more than stainless steel um any kind of personalization uh and um yeah so it can run up over a hundred up to a hundred or more depending on how you are optioned up and they have all sorts of uh you know, width sizes, 20 millimeters, of course, 22. And uh, depending on the color style, uh, they may not have all the sizes available um, or even all the different color combinations you can do with the stripes and the, the main um, the main body of the uh, strap itself. So I like these um, very much. I recommend them. 
so they're not too bad. It's, it's you know again they're all built to order, so you can customize the the length of it as well, so it will fit you. There's a lot you can just adjust the size also with this, so it'll you know there's definitely some flexibility even if you specify the size. Uh, it can fit quite a wide variety of wrist sizes actually, but I think it'll be properly sized or cut to length so that it'll have the best wrap without too much, uh, not too much material and not too little material. And that's a good thing about that. I mean, considering they're all customized to order, I don't mind that. So, and yeah. Like the fact you can specify the different color stripes and this is one of the newer ones like they didn't have white before but i've always wanted something kind of like this and finally they did and uh um, actually that looked pretty darn good on this i might have to give this a look next time because i'm trying to this dial is easy to be a stick for white and when you actually have something that is pure well pretty pure white like stark white up against this it, it uh, emphasizes the the gray color of this dial that it actually is because a lot of images I found on when we first saw this the Zimbi 16 um, it looked a bit overexposed and it just looked like it was a white dial and a white bezel with orange accents but it's not it's actually gray and this is silver but sometimes it's so bright it looks white but anyways um, okay getting long but I'm almost done so that's Erica's original um, no, watch Stuart. I found these out a while back. I forgot who from, but very cool. And these are also made to order. They're made in the USA. That's, uh, some of these have a, a USA flag in it. Uh, for some reason, some of them don't. Well, actually, this one's probably on the inside. No? No? Okay. And so, originally, there was one style. This was it. And what's good about these is that um, you have that kind of Elastic, it's elastic too. Very similar material to that, and they come in a variety. This one is actually, I don't know if you can see a difference. This one's a little bit more solid and more uh, firm, but it's still stretchy. And then they have some that's uh, definitely much softer, and you can tell the texture is different, more more easily pliable. This one just feels a bit more resistant. It's not like super like plastic or anything, but um, the same. This is you have extreme, somewhat extreme example. Yeah, this one's way looser, as you can see. Or this one, it looks just more, um, you know, more rigid in that sense. So this was, when they come, depend, the only thing is it was, seems to be maybe a lack of consistency in what colors you can get in the size, like 20, 22, uh, and what material. And that's why there's a lot of mix match, at least at the beginning. I don't know if these, straighten out and you can get all the different color material and options and all that available now but it's, it's been a little while since the last part but they are some of my favorites as well um and uh, what's how you put this on is, and what's kind of unique is that yes you still have to put it on similarly to the erica's original meaning you have to put on the spring bars um after the strap is on, or at least butted up against the in position to be on. Don't fly out. No, oh, no, the stuff you're not in. Okay, there we go. See that angling out? It's like, no, do not shoot over to two o'clock. I have a lot of cloth. Um, things that they could launch behind and I'm not going to pull those out. Okay, so that's it. And then, so at first it looks very similar, right? But what's kind of cool about these is that um, you don't have an actual layer underneath. The way you wear it is like this. So one thing I'll point out later, so you gotta put to that and then I pull this through. I might have seen this on Average Bros first but anyways and then you just kind of similarly you just got to find a way to hold this down and just pull this over run it through and then just kind of adjust it and there you go so this will keep the watch right up against your wrist you can see there's no layer it just kind of does this thing goes through and then both layers kind of run underneath now you know so 
I don't know. I, I don't mind. I like this look, but uh, I'll say uh, there's a couple of things about this first design that uh, it's why I switched to the. They actually have a couple of configurations. There might even, there's maybe currently four configurations on how to make these. Uh, the, the straps, but this is the original. I like the minimalist, and I'll show you that in a second, and why and why I like this one more. Uh, you see one. There's a lot of um, and this is because it's more thicker too. Uh, there's a little bit more um, layering. Look at that. It's about three layers on the bottom. One, two, three. It's just the way it's done, but it's not a big deal. But you know. Is, is it kind of a lot? Maybe, but it's never really bugged me too much. But then, you know, depending on what you're up against, it could shift a little bit. It could look a little bit untidy because of that. You can see it doesn't take too much. But, you know, it's quick straighten out. It's not a big deal. It's not like you're going to go end up like like this all the time. No, no, not even. I never really experienced that at all. But I would say just like a slight... Maybe it might be slightly pushed off like that, depending on what you do during the course of the day, but easy fix. No big, not really a big deal. But, uh, so that's one thing, just maybe it's because of the number of layering. So you can do this, you just pull this out. Now you gotta be careful, like also Erica, is when these, you don't wanna let this thing fly around because it can go whack. You know, that hardware may hit the, your crystal and or it may hit a metal part or something or maybe even this buckle might do it it's just something to be aware of you don't want to just let it you know, oops just let it fly off like okay i'm done smack you'll hear it and you're going to curse yourself out uh the other thing too is when you fit this on and also when you take it off one thing i noticed real quick is that you have this hardware this is fine this thing has a fold over here that keeps it from going any further so it gets stopped by the case and the spring bar basically right? it's not going to go any further but as you're pulling to try to get your wrist out see this area is where I have an issue with as you go you gotta I always make sure I'm holding on to this part because if you don't you can imagine it keeps going and it's going to hit your case and or your lugs and you can imagine this hardware meeting Either one of those will probably lay uh, unsavory scratches on it. And so um, that's why you make sure you hold on to this as you pull it out. Right? That's all you got to do. But it's something you got to be aware of. At least if you care about <laughs> scratches on your watches. Because, um, see, it will meet easily contact there. And this watch, the tuna, doesn't have much lugs. But... If you did have lugs, it'll probably be higher up coming off here. You could you know, come across them too and hit those as well as you can imagine. It's just wide enough and all that. So uh, with that in mind, you know, that's just the design of the early, the first versions. And let me just finish up because uh, I'm running on an hour here. But I had a lot to say and I've been meaning to say this for a while about my strap options and what I think about them and and maybe give you some ideas if uh, you're kind of interested also like what else is out there so that's that's the original and you can see the minimalist see how it's designed differently um actually I take that back this is the same one this is just the other material that's softer there's a name for them one is a poly and what's the other one is something else but I don't remember which is which, but there is. The, they will explain it on the website. This one is more comfortable and softer, and, and you get that. If you're trying to fit the watch like that, as I showed you, and it was in the original style, and even if it wasn't, even if it's in this minimal style, um, it is easier to do that, and it's also comfortable. But I would not recommend something like this. You know, this uh, has a little bit more liberal stretch to it so if you have a particularly heavy watch head um yeah you probably don't want to have you probably want to go with the one that's a little bit more sturdier that can handle it without otherwise this could kind of feel like it's not holding it secure and it could i can I, it will kind of 
move and it won't be comfortable and this doesn't feel secure when it's this you know pliable this is good for smaller or lighter watches but anything big and heavy um you probably want to avoid uh something like this particular material for your strap option so here comparing this to this is the minimalist these these two are the same actually this is the minimalist which has my preference and this came next in the design but you can get all these still i believe um and so we have foot buckle or cl clip or clasp to, to clasp you can see how it's different it doesn't have this fold over piece down here and then um you see how this buckle is upside down here and it doesn't have this uh keeper or this this metal thing here it actually will hook onto this similar to a uh marine national it'll make more sense it's kind of hard to explain so this one and i'll show you why this i like this more uh the way it's designed it's less fussy in many ways but let me see how do i do this so this okay it comes across like this okay so took me it's been a while since i put this one on so this one goes on this is the bottom right it'll go on the bottom this part that's folded over if you can see let me try to zoom up on this sorry if i've been on like wide angle for a while um i just busy trying to do this hopefully you were able to see what i was showing you earlier it's not really that hard but this one's kind of crucial to see better so this one hooks on like this on the bottom of the watch. So it's not going to go anywhere like that. You see, you can't pull it. And then this one goes over like this. Right? It just it just comes over like that, right? It loops around. But what you let, let you do is uh, put the, or what you want to do is put the spring bar down or into it like that to secure it. Make sure it's secure. And so what you have now is like this. So when you, first I'll show you, when you go pull it on, this one is not going anywhere and it's soft and everything, so that's fine. But then this is the crucial part. You don't have this, this hardware here anymore, the ASTAT. And even if you have this here, that this will stop it from going any further. So watch, see? You can stretch it more, a little bit more too. And look, you won't have that issue with the metal making contact with your watch shed and either side, especially that side that had this, this hardware here. So you don't have, you don't need that. So what you do is you slip your wrist through and then all you do is just, again, just pull it around like so. Don't let it slip because if it goes around, smack, or it could potentially, depending on how it's sized, it could hit your crystal and or case. And you just don't want to do that. So you just lift. Similar to Erica's Serenity, you just find a way to lift, lift, sorry, the focus, lift that, that, this thing enough just so you can just hook it in just like that. Look at that. So you still have no layer underneath, right? And it's just, it's just cleaner. You don't have to worry about scratching it, putting it on. And um, it's very clean and easy to do you can adjust the tightness obviously by moving this up and down and now you don't also have that you do have a double layer but it's not as as it's uh and this could shift a little bit i've again i've never really to tell you how that much an issue with that i see the potential for that but for the most part it's it's um uh, it's not going to really happen and it's just also you have that one less layer it's not three it's not tripled so that's that's more manageable and it looks better as well and then again you can move this up and down accordingly so that you can you can fit this hard piece of hardware uh, section anywhere you want either more directly down the line of your wrist or maybe perhaps maybe more to one side or the other so that's why i like the minimalist style of this one you know you get that that kind of MN look, but you also, uh, or some sort of NATO kind of look, right? This kind of strappy look, but you don't have that layer underneath. So you can, this keeps it nice and close, gives you that look. It's still very comfortable. Uh, uh, it's just, you know, you can't just slip it off. You do have to remove it 
with a spring bar tool or you know get the spring bars off to, to do our, uh, any kind of strap change um, but I think for the slight very tiny inconvenience of that you know um, I think it's a pretty good strap option and if it's one that you're gonna you could you know you don't need or like to change straps all the time that's all you could probably need anyways uh, to, for a while until you decide oh, okay I'm getting tired of this look let me switch it and then you go through the little effort of just removing the spring bars and swapping it out to whatever else you want so I like that so yeah so, um, I like all of them but I do gravitate a lot towards the Erica's a lot they have a lot of styles that I like and the build and everything's good this is actually pretty good too um, it's not bad and I should get more minimalist style like this. I, I've been slowly kind of phasing out my old ones and or at least uh, I will still wear them but I do eventually want to to get these in the minimalist style so I don't even have to worry about the this hardware ever scratching. You can get these with or without the the logo and I believe I let's see they change it now it's the steward used to be the watch steward. Uh, these are not too bad either. Uh, depend, I don't think there's really a difference in price in how it's built or anything like that. I think basically everything is roughly $24, $25 or so. Um, yeah, and again, you specify the length and uh, that's basically it. I don't think there's a... Ch uh, there may be an option now to get different hardware, but when I was buying it, not yet, if I recall. Um, but yeah, this is what I would do for... Um, this is not bad, but oh, one last thing. Uh, the only thing is, even with that, is that uh, with the, the old style, is that this is not no longer a closed loop system, right? Because the, the the strap doesn't go through the bottom, so it's almost basically acts acts like a two piece strap or bracelet, whatever. But it's not like a single continuous loop like um, a NATO or erica's original is right because it just doesn't run through the the section here right so if a spring bar does break um uh, that's it this thing will just come off just like a regular two-piece strap you know you have to have both secure uh, it's, it's not closed system so that's just something to be aware of in case you kind of overlooked that somehow so oh wait a minute that's right you're not going to have that redundant or that's kind of fail safe um system in case of spring bar breaks uh and you know it will keep the watch on like it does with those other straps uh this one because it doesn't connect over here uh that's you know you want it to be low and comfortable or it's not like those are uncomfortable you want to be low and close and not pop off any more than the watch normally would sit on your wrist right um, on any other strap um this is the way to go and that's kind of the cost you pay for it but I think there's not too much and it's a good variety of color and the quality is good. And, you know, for something that's built to order, that's not bad for roughly 25 bucks, if I recall. And this is, may have, you know, cost of living has gone up, so it may have gone up a little bit since I last bought it. But it should be around 25 bucks, more or less. And so, yeah. But, um, yeah, what do you think? Uh, you know, there's definitely, like, the MN style, there's... Uh, NDC, supposedly they're the official makers of them still uh, for the Marine National. They are definitely a different style of uh, strap, and I don't, I've never had one. Um, I think you have to buy them through is it Instagram or Etsy, something like that. It's like it felt kind of weird. I don't know. I never do shopping like that before, um, but uh, yeah, you just have to. Um, I better end this soon because my battery's gonna die but they 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 have i think they operate on a kind of weird like friction system like it's not even closed either the, the loop as far as i can tell it's like the way that it over overlaps and the way it just kind of friction fits in the piece of hardware that they have it's uh it's a little different uh, i don't have an example but those are supposed to be pretty nice too um but i've never had experience with those uh luft straps are supposed to be pretty good too but I think they do something similar to the watch steward, but I'm not 100% sure. Again, I've never bought it. 
And if I left out anything else, I'm sorry, it's not that they're bad or I don't like them or anything like that. It's just these are just what I've kind of, uh, you know, experienced and brought to my attention. I tried it and this is this is what I'm telling you from my, from my point of view. But uh, let me know if you got any suggestions and what do you think about any of these? Uh, uh, do you think one is better than the other or at least for you, you know? Um, uh, any particular application and all that uh, other than that thanks for watching and i'm glad i finally got to make this video i hope i didn't miss out on anything that i was i wanted to talk to you about but i think i got the gist of it all so uh until next time thanks for watching and uh yeah laters